Uh, there has, uh, lately there's been a lot of rumors about my name uh, surfacing with uh, many of these job openings, but I'm not here to discuss the rumors. I'm here to talk about our football team and just our selection of being uh, selected to the BCS uh, Sugar Bowl. But I'm, uh, I'm also here to talk about our win over Rutgers. And if you look at that win, uh, only you know just a few days old, you know I just the way like to wear a football team, just how resilient they were and just how they came together as a football team. You watch a team that goes down 14 to three. I think the, uh, the first possession that Rutgers has, the guy takes the ball, goes 85 yards for a touchdown, and, and then offensively we uh, started Stein at quarterback. Was really pleased with his performance. We're able to play two quarterbacks. We knew that uh, started the game that just didn't know how mobile Teddy was going to be. Knew we could just protect him. He could stand back and throw the ball like the way he finished the second half against Connecticut, but just didn't know how well he could just sit in the pocket because we knew Rutgers was going to bring a lot of pressure. And then if he had to move around, just how mobile he would be. But if you watch the way Stein played, I was I told Stein before that game started, I said two years ago, we were in a similar position. You know, Burke goes down, Stein comes in, and he plays well. But we were able to get the plays out of him, especially for uh, the short yardage situations that we were in. He would come in and you know, if they had the option where we got him outside the pocket and if uh, the fullback was open, he uh, made a throw to the Hauser or he kept the ball and just ran it. And then you watch Teddy come in. You know, you get a third down play there on the goal line. He was able to shuffle the ball to Jeremy Wright. He goes in for a score. Uh, uh, Terrell Floyd goes down, makes a big hit on the kickoff, then uh, throws the ball to Devontae to, uh, Parker for a touchdown. That's an amazing catch Devontae uh, made. I teased him because it looked like he was just floating in the air when he went up and uh, took the ball. But just to watch our defense come back to second half and just completely uh, shut down Rutgers, made some plays there at the end, able to get the ball back for our offense, and we were able to come away with the win. Now we have a chance to go to our second BCS uh, bowl in the history of this program. Playing an outstanding opponent. I don't know if I really wanted this team, you know, with my ties there at the University of Florida, being there for so long, having a relationship. A lot of those players uh, end up recruiting off of that team. But I'm just so happy for this uh, program. I'm happy for this university, happy for this city, for us to go back and uh, go win the uh, Big East and then have a chance to go play a, a top-notch opponent. If you're looking at a team that we're going to go face, one game away from playing for a national championship. And who's to say who should be in that game? But, you know, we took that draw, and I'm just so happy for us as a, a program. I don't know what the spread is right now, but I know it's probably fairly large. So, you know, it gives our players a, a little motivation where they know that they're going to have to go play. And, and they have the respect for that program because a lot of those guys, we, with the number of players we have on this team from the state of Florida, they know uh, what that program's all, all about and who we're facing. Will Muschamp is an outstanding coach. If you're looking at football team, a very physical football team, does a really good job on the offense of running the ball. Gillis Lee is a, a, a big time running back, runs behind his pass, runs very hard. Trisco is a quarterback that can beat you with his feet or his hands, gets outside the pocket, strong enough and mobile enough where he can run down the field. And then our offensive line with Harrison Jalapio with Wilson, you know, some of those guys, that they were young when I was there, but now they have a chance to step up and they're really playing well and they're doing a really good job of just running the ball. And defensively, I think with all the categories, uh, they're probably top five in every category from score defense to pass efficiency defense to turnover margin. You know, and that is a top-notch defense. You look at the front forward easily, and uh, it would do Lorente McCray, guys that have been in that program for a while. Then the secondary with Elam being there, uh, being the safety there in the secondary, and then with Bostic and Jelani Jenkins being their quarterback. You know, those players have been in that program now. They're, they are uh, juniors and seniors, so it, it's a, a really good defense. So it's going to be a challenge for us, and their special teams is really solid. A really good challenge for us. And, and we have uh, almost a month to get ready for it, so it's it's great for this program. It's good to go play a top-notch no, top program. How is Teddy right now? What is his condition? How does he project over the next four weeks? Uh, Teddy, uh, if, you know, we, we have some time with Teddy, so we're going to be able to, to try to get him healthy for this game. And, uh, you know, if you look at it, it's the wrist and the ankle, so we have some time off here where we should be able to uh, get him uh, prepared. I know our medical staff uh, for the Rutgers game, there was 24 hours around the clock, so... With the, we have some time here now, so we can just take our time. Well, can you get back to practice? Well, we, uh, we're going to practice this weekend, and then we have finals coming up. So we're going to wait for some final exams to end, and then we're going to uh, go from there. Then we're really going to practice every day from there out.
Well, before you get that surgery, I mean, will he get the same surgery that Gorgie had in study, or will he, how will he handle him? I don't, I don't even know if he's going to have surgery just yet, uh, but uh, it, I think that with the staff all going to get together, we'll make that decision. With, uh, with so much time in between, how much outside of Teddy, how much, how back to full health do you think some of the other guys will also be? Like, do you, do you feel like you know this is enough time where you'll be pretty much at 100% going in? Well, I'm, I'm just thinking here, uh, Teddy was probably our biggest issue going into the to Rutgers game, but you know I, I think you're gonna get Malden back and I get Malden back to uh, get some healing. Uh, D'Angelo Brown played a couple of plays in the uh, Rutgers game and he's gonna be able to come back. So I, I think uh, no, no way Sonoris will be back, but for the rest of those guys who's been kind of you know nicking those bruises in it, that we'll be able to get back. Sheldon Rankins. Uh, Sheldon Rankins, I think, will be back. Would you talk about the stage of the Sugar Bowl? I mean, the history, the tradition. It's one of the biggest bowls that's ever existed. <laughs> it was, you know, you think about the Sugar Bowl, I can remember, you know, in the 90s when I was in Florida, it's almost a home for us, but that's before the BCS started. You know, each week, you once you won the Southeastern Conference, you went and played in the Sugar Bowl, and it's a, a, a big stage for you. And then uh, before I took this job, I mean, my last game with, was when we played Cincinnati in the Sugar Bowl. But it's great for this program. It's, it's going to be a great stage for our players, and, and, uh, and they deserve it. They're just the way they played, they deserve to be on that stage. But... You know, it's an it's elite program you're playing, and, but if we want this program here to get to where it needs to get to and get, become consistent, then that's the stage that we need to be on. And we talked about a lot how, you know, next year was the year you thought you'd be really good. Is this kind of the first game of, of next year, starting maybe a Heisman campaign for Teddy, getting you in the top 10, top 5 to start the year if you can win this? Well, it, this this kind of kicks it off because you are into a new year, so you're, you're talking about a new year now, so it kind of kicks you off. So you, you get this game, and, and you're playing against a really good uh, football team. So it's just going to show just how far, you know, just let us know, just gauge who we are right now, just how far away we are from being one of those elite programs. How important are these four weeks or the two weeks, depending on when you're actually in practice, of the extra practices you get that you might not normally have gotten, and what does that mean towards next year? Well, it's big because what you need, you need these practices because you, when you get into January, you have to go through a, what we call a discretionary period so the players can't do anything. So it's good that you get these practices in now before that period hits you uh, before the, after the game. I haven't seen you since last week. Um, what's your reaction to your bell going into the ACC? Does it change your perception at all of the job and the program? Well, it's, it, going into the ACC was big for our program, and not only for football and basketball, <clears throat> but it's big for the other sports also. So now you have a name behind your program, you have a conference behind your program, and, and it's really great because you look at a very competitive conference, and, and now when you look at it, now you have a chance to go in and compete, and you're going to p- compete on a national stage and a national level now. How important is that to get that out of the way before February? I'm sure that every recruit asks about it, and you don't know what to tell them. It's really big for the recruits because now the recruits can look at it now you're in the ACC and, and it, it's so funny how things are and you know how the young people are and the way they look at things and what's really said because they say, oh, now you're in a real conference, but I, I said it then, what's a real conference? But it's, uh, it's good that uh, we have, we get that push out of the way. So the recruiting wise, we have a, so, a conference that you can really talk about and this is who the competition is and this is who you're going to be competing against. Charlie, when you go into it as a staff now, when you recruit kids and say we go on to a BCS bowl game, how does that change things on the recruiting landscape? Well, it, what happened, the Big East, you still had that tie-in. So now with the ACC, you know, just because of what was happening in the Big East, so many teams were leaving. Now what you're getting into the ACC, now you get to go compete against the Florida States, the Clemsons, and the North Carolinas and the NC State. So it's, it's all there for you now. So it is a bigger stage in the competition. You're going to be in a very competitive, a very, very competitive market now. But as a, as a staff, I mean, the next month, you're doing it now. This year, you, you guys are going. How does that change for you guys? Well, what you have to do now, it is, it's all about your recruiting. It's going to change because now you can get in some homes that you didn't think you could get into. And you're going to be able to knock on some doors and, and go compete some, go, go, go recruit some guys that you thought maybe you would never be able to recruit. What are you telling recruits about your own future? Oh, I, do, I just tell them that I'm here at the University of Louisville. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm coaching at. Present tense. That's where I'm coaching at University of Louisville, head football coach. Can you clarify uh, what how you define a job interview versus a conversation? But Tim, they never asked me that question, so I don't have to answer. Well, I'm asking you that question. Well, but you're not a recruit. 
<laughs> you never know. <laughs> I'm not here to discuss rumors, but you're not a recruit. Uh, Charlie, but I mean, I understand not discussing, but have you, do you weigh, I mean, when you sit, when you put yourself in that situation and these rumors come out, how do you, I mean, by not addressing them, they don't go away. How, how do you come across the decision that I'm not going to say anything about it? I'll let you guys run with it. <laughs> I'll let you guys carry it. Cause, but, but, but you know what happens, I have a great job here, so why do I ever have to answer questions? And, and I, I say this to you, if I didn't have a job, if I was a head coach, then you will address those issues. But I have a job. Do you get annoyed by all the rumors, or do you take it as a, maybe a badge of honor if the success you've had here little? I, I get annoyed, very annoyed, because a lot of times when those rumors come out, people don't know exactly what they're talking about. <coughs> so why discuss? If you're not talking to me, you know, you're not getting it from me. So why would you ever just start just running with something that you have no idea what you're running with? This is what's got to happen here. People have to start respecting this program, and I know what has happened in the past here. Maybe coaches have come and ran out of here, whatever. And, but uh, if you don't ever respect your program. And, and then things, the rumors do happen. But a lot of times, if you look at other programs, a lot of guys that do the writing for these programs, they're kind of tied into the university. So the rumors are stopped by the guys who are writing, who are writing the stories. But when we're allowed to just continue to just evaporate and just go wherever it goes, then that's what happens. So why would you ever like, okay, I'm at the University of Louisville, why would you ever let stories just take off and guys just put it out there for no reason? Oh, I'm asking that well, Charlie, myself. Uh, you know, theoretically, the, the Auburn rumor started with Auburn sources. And with Auburn sources. Well, okay. And if that's the case, I mean, you said that you didn't interview there, but if they call you on the telephone, do you consider that an interview or not? But they never call and tell. So okay, I well, that's what we're trying to clarify. Did, but I didn't, there was but I didn't no need, contact But at let all. me say, I didn't need to clarify that because they never asked me that. So I didn't need to clarify. Well, that's I mean, what we're I'm trying to clarify. Gonna deal, but that's what I'm saying. I'm never going to deal in rumors. I mean, so people can say whatever they want to about me. They've always said it. But if I didn't say it, I'm not going to deal with it. So people can say and write whatever they like. Is this a no-win situation for you? It is a no-win situation because people are going to say whatever they want. And, and I'm not, not that I'm trying to get pissed here, but, I mean, you just look at it. Really. I mean, who else? What other coach out there they're talking about besides me? Well, it's you this year. Other yeah. years yeah. the same. And it, it, the reason this happens is, in the past, so many other coaches have said no, and there was a coach here by the name of Petrino that said he wasn't doing anything. And, you know, and, and that's why coaches as a whole don't have any credibility. They say they're not going anywhere, and then they do. But uh, but the whole deal also is that guys that write your article have to have credibility also, and they need to be accountable for what they write. Right. Well, I guess what it comes down to, though, people want to want to know is did did somebody from Auburn contact you or one of your representatives? But I don't have a, I'm going to say this to you guys. I have no representative. I represent Charlie Strong, represents himself. I have no representative. Charlie, the thing of it is, too, is that uh, we can write what we feel and probably what we know. But what the fans, they don't want us, they don't want to hear it from us. They just want to hear it from you. That's, that's, that's what it's about. And I agree with you. And a lot of times it gets started by whomever. I don't know whomever it gets started by. But let's, let's get on with the game. That's. Would you be willing to then put all the rumors aside and say that you'll be coaching next year at the University of Louisville? But I mean, I, I will say that at the right time. <laughs> you understand how this is creating more speculation just because oh, you're but, not. But I, I agree with you, but yeah. let's say this. Let's talk about the game. Let's, say, let's talk about the Rutgers game. Let's move on with that. Who's got your champions awards, Coach? <laughs> I, I see this. Our, our quarterback would be one on offense would be Teddy. Terrell Floyd was, was the defensive player, and Wallace was the special team. At what point did you find out it was going to be sugar? I know most people thought it was going to be orange. And then, when did you start realizing Northern Illinois was going to enter the picture? I really didn't know until um, what yesterday evening, Rocco, someone had called us, but had no idea that, that we were going to go to the Sugar Bowl to play Florida. When it happened, what was your reaction when you heard Florida? Oh, I said, ooh, but <laughs> it's number three team. But you know what it is. It, like I said, for this program to, to take off the way it should, we have to play teams like that. And then it just, 
sets the gauge and sees exactly who we are, where we are, and how far we got to go. I know that was frustrating, but there was so much time where you were rumored for jobs and you didn't get them. And now you're rumored for jobs and people are worried about you taking head of <laughs> jobs. Is that odd? Oh, it's so odd. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you watched Florida this year on TV? Not knowing, of course, you might play them, but just if, if we weren't playing, if you got at home, if we were at home, didn't had a chance to watch them, probably would turn on and watch them play. But you have any idea how much you have seen? Well, how much did you know about them before you found out you're going to play in the Sugar Bowl? That's probably it. Probably, you know what? You just didn't know we were going to play them, but you watch them just because of the connection that they had there in, in the years that I coached there, and a lot of those players that I knew. Can you give us a number on how many of their players were your recruits? If you look at defense, um, Bostic, Jelani Jenkins, uh, Josh Evans, got it. You know what it is? I, th I think with that junior, the junior senior class, it was a lot of those guys in there because even uh, you know Gillisley was a running back that recruited down there in the land. But it's a large number of those players. Because now they're older, so now that, you know, because it's, what, it's been three or four years, and those guys are in that stage now. Because you have some Resher uh, seniors that was there, what, when I was, was there two years with me. Have you heard from any of those guys this week? Not this week, I haven't. I uh, just, you know, in the past few weeks, you know, I talked to Laurent McCray, I would talk to Bossy, but I haven't uh, this week. The, the, the phone calls will be coming because, you look at it with the owner team right now, Gerald Christian and Robert Clark were teammates that we recruited there. They were Elam's and uh, the quarterback, uh, Jacoby's. They were teammates in high school. So a lot of those guys, and Bouchelle uh, played with most of those guys. Bouchelle was there two years with a lot of those guys. So he's going to have uh, a lot of phone calls from those guys. Is this Florida team, the, the personnel, the way they play, is it something that you want to model your program after and eventually look like? Well, it's all about recruiting. If you look at that state, you have a recruit, you have a state that, or you don't have to go very far to recruit them. I mean, you you just break down that state, and you can go get 25 players within that state. And, but you know what's different for us here? We just don't have the the state where we can go and get 25 players. So yes, you would like to go find those type of players, but you're gonna ha you have to go outside of this state to go get them. Whereas with them, they can stay within their range and they can go get whoever they want. What about the style of play, the, the way they play defense, win at the line of scrimmage, and the, the athletes on the outside? Is that what you'd like to see with your program? You have to win at the line of scrimmage. And and, and I would say this, if you, if you look at us, you know, receiver-wise, we're gonna match up well with them because you know, with Devontae, with Cole, with Andrell, with Eli, uh, we have some receivers that we can put on the field, but where they're, where they're really strong is, is up front, where you want to win with your front seven. And that's where the, the core of their fo football team, the toughness of their team is up front. Sounds like you're worried about giving Teddy enough time to throw. Is that accurate? Well, it's, it's we got to protect him every week, so it's not only this game. We, you know, we're worried about that with Rutgers also. They've got a great pass de <clears throat> efficiency defense. What, what makes it so effective? Well, they get pressure. They went up front, and we were just talking about. They, they can get pressure on the quarterback, and they don't have to rush many guys to go get the pressure. They can beat one-on-one -on -one blocks. When you said the core, you were talking about the offensive line also. You mentioned the front seven. But the, the, the core, the offensive and defensive and line, yes. You're going to be a big underdog, you, you know that, going into this game. And with them coming in playing a, a Big East school, can you speak, when you were at Florida your last year there and you all were getting ready to play Cincinnati, were you all worried about that, about – you, the players thinking that you know they're playing a Big East school and that they don't get a lot of respect. You... No, I, I tell you what happened with that game because it's different with the situation that Florida's in. When we were going in to play Cincinnati, we had just lost to Alabama, and plus it was you know it, it was so different. You know, not that I'm knocking Cincinnati, but it was just one of those days because it was the seniors' last game too. You know, looking at Tebow, you're looking at Spikes, and it was a, a group of seniors that. Are, what, probably like 16 that was their last day. So you knew they were going to perform well. And so now if you, what's different is is they kind of look at, they do, and again, players do, they look at your schedule and look at who you played. And probably the only team that we played that they're going to be familiar with is uh, Kentucky because that's the only t opponent that the two of us have played. When I asked you last year when you were in the running for a BCS game at the end of the year, you kind of you laughed when I said, is this a BCS team? You kind of chuckled a little bit. Now, you know, can you, I mean, can you believe this program you're in it, you're in a BCS Bowl with this team this year? Well, with this team this year, I mean, you, you look at the way we start off, you're 9 and 0, and you, sit, you felt like you had a really good football team. And now, we did, that was our whole goal. If you look at it, get to the winning season, get to a big bowl game. 
and our players all talked about we need to get in a BCS bowl. And now that they have, it, now that they're here, they can go play a really good opponent. So we'll just see, and it, it does. It it gives your program a chance to see exactly where you are. Do you think does this team like being an underdog? I think you mentioned that earlier in the season. They like to play. Well, I think they like to be an underdog when they feel like someone is very competitive <laughs> when you have a good <laughs> manager. But it's just, you know, a lot of times with the teams that we've been underdog to is teams within our conference. So now we're stepping out of the conference and you're playing against the Southeastern Conference. Yeah, I mean, you think you'll enjoy this this role? I mean, nobody, there's 16 well, nobody's and a half points chance, underdog. Yeah, so it, 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 you know what it is, players just step up because they don't want to get embarrassed. So the, I think this team will step, step up and get prepared to go play. How much are you at a point where with Teddy, you, if you're throwing Teddy out there, do you feel like you have a chance? Oh, if Teddy plays, then you you you, uh, you feel really good about yourself because the thing about him, as long as we protect him, now we, we're going to have to protect him and, and not allow their pass rush to get to him. And they are really good cover guys because you look at Elam, you look at Roberson, you look at their secondary, they're all juniors and seniors also back there in the back end. With Josh Evans at uh, safety, he's a senior. So it's it, it's going to be it's going to be some exciting matchups. They play a lot of man coverage. So they just, if our receivers can win the one-on-one -on -one battles against their DBs then, and protect a quarterback, then you, we just see exactly where we are. But we're going to have to run the ball, too. You, you have to run the football. But when you played the second half at Rutgers, does that defensively, did that make you think, finally, this is the way that our defense should be playing? And you like the way we finish out against uh, Connecticut also, but it's, it's just that defensively we have a lot we can run. We're not very big, we can run, so we just can't allow people just to tee off on us. We have to move people because we're very undersized in the middle. But you, you do, you like the way we run around, guys made plays, and uh, but it, it's, got, it's got to happen in this game. Get the people to third down and get off the field on third down. Getting into the ACC, how does that change recruiting for you in any way? You suddenly can get into the Carolinas or Georgia or Virginia, which maybe you wouldn't have had before? Well, we, what we're going to do is just stick to where we've been, and uh, you know, just. But now we're able to just get into Atlanta more, and then just go find the guys that we've been had not been able to recruit because they just felt being in the Big East, you know, they weren't very interested. So we'll find out just what the interest lies now. Tom, what would have to change? You haven't been able to run the ball in Syracuse, Connecticut, or Rutgers. Now you're facing a top five defense. <laughs> what would have to change to to let you run the ball against a team like Florida? Well, our players got to understand it's going to be a physical game. If we can't win at the line of scrimmage, we're not going to win the game, and we're going to have to be able to run the football. But you haven't been able we to. We haven't so. been able to. And, you know, we come out of the Rutgers games fine, but the other two we didn't come out of. And it's, it has to be where we just got to make sure that guys know exactly who they're blocking and just do their job. And that hasn't happened. You know, we've been turning guys loose, and we've been running past guys. We run a power run time. We just run right past a guy, and the guy just sat there and hit the running back for a three or four yard loss, which that cannot happen. Have you heard the Joker will be on the other sidelines? Uh, oh, yeah, he's going to go to Florida as a wide receiver coach. That's good for him. How did you react to the little shot that uh, Mark Stoops took at Louisville yesterday? I didn't hear what he, what he wow. said. Someone asked him if he would be coaching Florida State, and he said, well, I definitely want to help with the game planning, quote, especially if they play Louisville. He'll get a chance to play us. He'll <laughs> 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 you know, get a chance to play us next year. He'll play us every year. <laughs> what, would you, what would you like to see changed in this job? Is there, are there things that you feel like this program needs moving forward that you, I mean, you're, you're in a position now you could probably ask for anything. Yeah, it, it's just so hard because at the end of the season, I, I think I can sit down with our AD and, and uh, Tom and do anything we ask. And it, it, it's going to be some uh, things that we need to get done. And we'll, we'll be able to get them done and get this program moved to where it needs to move to. Can you give us an example of something like that? Well, if you look at, you know, we could talk about expanding the weight room, which we're going to do. And, uh, and then uh, once we start that, that movement, then we'd, we'd like to say, hey, at some point, if we get the program going, we'd like to add more seats in, the, put more uh, seats in the stands there. And, and then they just in, uh, enlarge our seating capacity. What would you like to see from the fans? Uh, you know, uh, you've been at SEC schools, you know, you know it's, it's, it's a big deal. You all are playing Connecticut, and you're, you know, 9-1, and one, and there's 46,000 fans. That was the announced attendance. What would you like to see from them as far as support for this program? But it's, it's you want the passion from the fans, and you want the support. And I tell you this, and this frustrated me more than anything. 
and, and, and we have great fans here. But when we came here on senior day to Connecticut game, we get off the bus, and I don't care what time card, uh, card march is. I mean, the heck if it's 8 o'clock in the morning, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. But no one came out. And for it to be the seniors, I mean, we had a few people out there. I mean, we had the real fans out there. I'm not saying we didn't have anyone. But you, you, you would like to just see more, more fans come out. And, and I know I heard, you know, it's new. and It's not new. But I mean, if you support your program, you support your program. And you, you want that, and, and, and we have fans here that do support their program. And, and not to throw any salt on the wound, Kentucky can travel with the Big Blue Nation, they go take over. I mean, what? we should have that same passion here and go take over when we go travel. And, and there's no reason why we shouldn't. I mean, but, you know, someone told me that we're such a young uh, program, and we have a young fan base that that doesn't happen. But I, I don't buy it. I, I just think that when you're passionate about something, you go support it. And, and it's not that you don't, it's not, it doesn't matter who we play. If it's Connecticut, if it's Pittsburgh, it's Syracuse, you come to support your team. You come to watch Teddy play. You come to watch Stein play. You come to watch Preston Brown play. You come to support your team. It doesn't matter who's on the other side. Just look at the other conferences, and, and uh, I don't think it's any different. I think those fans come out to support their program, not their who whom they're playing against. Do you think if you, by going to the Sugar Bowl, is this, is this a building block into changing that culture? I mean, is this one of those things that, could lead to, you know, what you're talking about there? Well, you, you would like to think it would, but it, I mean, you, you would hope it would. But it also, though, it, it, it's it's here. I mean, we, we have, I mean, look at this city. I know it's split down the middle, whatever, but we still have our fans here, and our, and our fans can support this program. Does, does fan support make it less comfortable for you as a head coach and being comforted in your job status as that coach? The fan base ain't gonna have anything to do with it. I just look to support our players. I think our players deserve to get the fan support whenever they, whomever they play. I think you should pack it in, and and whomever we play, you're there to go cheer on our players, and, and that's what that's your role. But you want to, but you know, at the whole deal, if, if we're not winning, okay, then I can see why you don't want to come out and support us. But well, I mean, we're sitting there at nine and zero, oh, and you're right, we go play, um, and we don't even pack the stadium, and we're nine and zero. Oh, Wow, I mean, we're not at all. What more do we need to do? Then we come back against Connecticut and we have card march. But, and then I think about, I know this at Ohio State, that whatever they seat, they seat, they had a 12 o'clock game too. They had a march, they filled it up. Have you been given any indication that maybe Louisville might get into the ACC or be playing in the ACC next year rather than 2014? I think that depends on all what Maryland, what happens with Maryland. Going to the half soon, they go. Yeah. Charlie, how, how important is the next month or so for the future of the program with recruiting? You got a lot, you're going to be bringing a lot of guys in. It's a small class. How important to, to finish this class off the right way? Well, we got to make sure we get the right people in this class, and we have to make sure that they, that we that we're very selective in who we bring. <coughs> I mean, we we got to we know this. We need offensive linemen. We need defensive linemen. I always want offensive and defense a lot. I don't care how many we take. I just want big guys, big body guys. And then with our skill, we, we have to go get us some defensive backs, big defensive backs that can run and that can cover. I mean, if you watch, I mean, it's nothing against little guys, but the ball can get thrown up over little guys' heads. And you have to have some speed back there. But, and, um, you know, it's, that's what's critical. We, we have to make sure that we get the right, the right players in this class because it's a small class. And, we, we can't miss in this class. We cannot. We know how you reacted. How did Teddy and the other 33 Florida kids react to this? To that you're playing in Florida. <clears throat> oh, I haven't had a chance to talk to them. They're probably excited. Um, you know what? No, they probably wanted to go to the Orange Bowl. <laughs> 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 That's probably where they wanted to go. Since it's New Orleans, do you have any special curfews? Oh, I see. Oh, we're going to have curfew. Yeah. So <laughs> I think we'll let these guys roll by. <laughs> 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 No, we will have a curfew. <laughs> do you find that coaches implement tougher restrictions in New Orleans because of the culture there? I say this: the, the number of years I've been there, like the first couple of nights, it wasn't you know, the uh, curfew wasn't that um, tough. But then after that, we start locking them down because the closer you get to game week, and plus, if, if you think about it, if you ever been there on New Year's <laughs> Eve, it is like out of control. So they won't have that issue. We won't have that issue because they'll be locked down then. But it's it's uh, you're right because of Bourbon Street and, and what's you know just what it's all about. You you have to put a curfew on the players because I, I just don't want anything to happen to any of our players and it's our responsibility. Would you have maybe had more worries though in my in Miami? Um, 
just where the uh, I think just where the hotels are located in Miami would not have bothered me because they would have had to drive to get to where they needed to get to, and a lot of them wouldn't have had their cars with them. Now they would have had friends coming over, and as to where you would have had to cut it off with just family members, but we could have handled the family members. But you were here, you're right in, you're right in the midst of it here. You were the head coach in the moment, correct? I mean, you have all that preparation. What did you learn from that time of having that length of time repair that can help you for this time? Well, it, it's all about making sure that your team is prepared and how you practice. You know, you, you're going to have a lot of practices to get in, so just make sure that you're smart about your practices. And then make sure that what you're practicing, what the other t opponent is doing, just don't go out to just the punch the clock to say we practice. We really have to work on the University of Florida. Can you recap the conversation you had with Will when he came off after sliding short of that first time? <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, I said well, why, why would you slide? And he's like, well, coach told me to get down. I'm the only quarterback. I said, yeah, we'll get the first down first. I mean, you can slide all you want. But it was a guy. I mean, you, you, I didn't see them. It was a guy really coming for me. He had to get down. But I'm like, get the first down first. And then that's when we had to go for it. And we got that one. But the next fourth down, we didn't get it. He said he told you to calm down. He did. He's like, come on, coach, calm down. I got it. I said, no, get the first down. <laughs> <laughs> From everything he's done this year, a trip to the Sugar Bowl, should Teddy get a trip to New York? I, I said this, and I told those guys uh, the other day, I was telling Reese Davis, I think Teddy Bridgewater, if there's a better quarterback in the country, I'd like to see him. But, but what Teddy can do, uh, he's, he's a pocket thrower, and he has enough about him mobility-wise where he can run, a, uh, run away from uh, defenders. And plus, you know, he does a great job of going from his first read to the second where he can find he can find open receivers, and he may, and his, uh, he can throw a ball unbelievable. You know, everyone that watched that game the other night, I, I bet I got 100 million Texas on. Guy, your, your quarterback is so tough. Wow, there's guys that was watching the game. Who do you heard from maybe after getting this full bid that you, know, you worked with so many different people that you know, you're really glad to hear from? Like, there was a message you got or something that, that you, know, you really liked? Yeah, you heard it from so many guys. And, uh, you know, some people were just so happy for this program, I think, more than anything. <laughs> and not, not so much of what we, and, you know, yeah, they're happy about what we had accomplished. But I think just for, the, just for this university. Guys are just so happy because you heard it after the game, after our game against Rutgers, because they knew we were going to get a, uh, a BCS bid, but just didn't know who we were going to play. I mean, you personally, like with Urban or anybody like oh, that? Oh, I talked to Urban. Yeah, I heard from Urban, heard from Coach Hose. I talked to those guys. <coughs> you said that you wanted to see if Teddy could move around and all, so on and so forth. What was your thinking in not starting mm -hmm. him? I mean, if you're going to find out what he can do, why not just go ahead and start him? Well, what happened earlier in the week, he didn't practice. So my policy has always been if you don't practice, nope. then you're not going to start. And just so, and, and I know it was Teddy and he's a key, but you know, you, you feel like, okay, if I can go in with a healthy Will Stein and he can just manage the offense and make the throws and get us to where we need to get to, then let's go play Will because he deserves it because he's been practicing. Now, so if Will has done. A little more, you would have left him in, you're saying? No, no, then, then but with Teddy, but so now you, you get into a situation, now you got him back, so let's go ahead and play him some and just see see where he is. I mean, I think Will did great. I think he did an unbelievable job of what we asked him to do. I mean, you look at those key third downs that he made, I mean, it was like, wow. I mean, one, what, two he ran, and then the one he threw the ball out there to Hauser in the flat. But the pressure they, they were bringing, they were going to make Teddy, and, and, and Teddy wasn't mobile enough to run away from that pressure. There's no way. Getting back to the Heisman as a defensive guy, does it bother you that it's evolved into just an offensive award? Well, that's, that's, who, that's the guys who got, get all the press, I guess. You know, you like to see more defensive guys. Because you, you watch, uh, you, you think about just defensive players, and I like to get, uh, the player there, for, uh, Jarvis Jones from, mm -hmm. From Georgia, he's an outstanding defensive player. Even the, the player uh, Green at uh, Rutgers, he, he made a ton of plays for them. So you you watch a defensive player, he doesn't get the hype that an offensive player gets just because you know you get so many offensive guys around him. like Teddy. You think about all the weapons that he had, but defensively you had to go do it by yourself, and there's not much help. Is it good that we're going to have the storylines with you in Florida? The coaching storylines that all the storylines about you and you don't have to worry about your players doing <laughs> press conferences. No, I you know what I that's why they take take it the publicity away from me and give it to the players. It's about the players, it's nothing about me. And I told our staff they did an unbelievable job this year of getting this football team ready. The reason why they were in the position we're in 
not only because of the players, but because of the job our staff did. You know, you look at Vance on defense, you look at Watt on offense, you know, you look at Forbes, you look at Dukes, you look at Carter, look at Sharon, look at Tommy and uh, uh, B uh, Kurt and uh, B Mary. Just the job that those guys did, and then Pat Moore in the, the weight room. And we're in a position we're in because of the outstanding staff that we had. And there's nothing I did. It's just the guys that I have around me, have a great staff around me, and they were able to, to lead this team. We knew that leadership would be an issue. And to watch that group of coaches go lead this football team. And it was. Each week it was a battle. Each week we you were trying to keep them up. Each week it was don't let them get complacent. You know, I'm worried about them getting complacent because we're you know, you're going 3-0, and you're going 4-0. and We've never been in this position before. And just keep working, guys. Keep battling. Keep fighting. And uh, just keep these guys prepared. And, they, and make sure that we have a game plan that we can go in and we can execute that game plan. And that our players can can utilize their talents. If it's speed, let them go run. If we're physical, let's go play the physical game. That's what we want. To always want to go play is a physical game. But the job our, our coaches did was just a phenomenal job, and I'm just so proud of our coaches. Talking about your staff, do you anticipate, I mean, BCS and there'll be other jobs opening, do you anticipate anybody looking around? or? Well, I tell them all the time, if, there's, you know, if you have an opportunity and you think it's better in here, then you know, more welcome to it. And uh, you know, if I need to help you, I will help you. But you know, what, if there's a coach that leaves his staff, I know it's a lot of them lining up wanting to come here too. So it wouldn't be hard to replace them. No. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be. Yeah. Just because they couldn't do what we had. It would be hard to replace them. I, I don't want to send it to them. They all want to leave now. <laughs> would you be hard to replace? Would I be hard to replace? No, coach. You know what it is. I think that all coaches can be replaced.